Another bikey in jail. We're stretching the definition of bikey nowadays, aren't we? This looks like a bikey. This looks like the bad boy member of a band competing in Australia's Got Talent. Turn the lights off in this place. If you took the bogan tats off Jamie Collins and put him in a suit, he could be a lawyer, which would have been a better career choice because Jamie has paid a lot of money for legal counsel over the past few years. After all, I was high. The one-time member of the Rebels Outlaw Motorcycle Club has been thrown in jail for six years and two months for his part in a bikey shooting south of Perth. This was two years ago at a time when Jamie was being touted as Nick Martin's heir apparent. Jamie was with two mates to settle a score with a guy they were meeting at a rural property in Port Kennedy. The guy they were meeting brought his wife and kids to a meeting with bikies. Father of the year. At a rural property in Port Kennedy. Yeah, a few red flags there. Collins got out of his car, armed with a shotgun, as you do. He told the kids to leave, which they did faster than if he'd been Pennywise the Clown, and something then happened to cause shotgun pellets to enter the leg of the bloke Jamie had come to meet. Boom! Collins was picked up by the cops a while later, and the judge has just thrown the book at him because he committed that shooting while on bail for a fuel-stealing operation that was described as a sophisticated heist. But on closer analysis really wasn't. Jamie used fake number plates to steal diesel from servos while disguising his distinguishing face tats with makeup. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's family. He then sold the fuel for a cut price 85 cents a litre on his own Facebook page. It's a perfect plan. Jamie's lawyer told the judge his client was on the road to redemption. His blacked out tattoo showed he had left his bikey life behind. That wasn't of his own choosing, apparently. No, the rumour is Jamie was thrown out of the club because they thought he was a rat. I got this rat, this annoying, eating rat. Before joining the Rebels, Jamie had been the boss of a bikey gang called Southern Independence, which sounds more like a political party bankrolled by Clive Palmer than an outlaw motorcycle club. And that's my kind of party. Southern Independence bills itself as a not-for-profit organisation. Charitable status notwithstanding, it's a feeder group for the Rebels and Jamie soon graduated to the Big Boys Club. I'm a big kid now. It was while a Rebel that Collins got into a dust-up at the only place where bikies like to fight more than rural properties in Port Kennedy, Crown Casino. Jamie was with three other Rebels four years ago when they bashed a Comanchero, a gang that Rebels were feuding with at the time. The lawyer Jamie was paying in six-minute blocks back then... You're right, he should have gone to law school. I'm serious. His lawyer said the fight was consensual. I challenge you to a duel. I accept. Cops subsequently raided Jamie's house in Byford and landed the trifecta of bikey law enforcement, a firearm, drugs and stolen property. Easier to catch a bikey than a fish at the moment. Apparently we're going to need a smaller boat. The McGowan government says West Australians have been having too much BCF and fun and we're at risk of having to eat blowfish, which everyone who's watched The Simpsons knows are buggers to fill it. Concentrate. Boaties are now not going to be able to catch so-called demersal species, snapper, jewies and the other bigger fish that taste good, for six months of the year. The ban is divided into three separate blocks of the calendar and applies between Kalbarri and Augusta, which is good news for tackle shops in <laughs> Carnarvon and Albany. As well as time restrictions, the number of fish per boat is going to be capped at four instead of the current two per person. The good news is the six-month ban doesn't apply to people fishing from the shore. The number of dewfish per boat previously capped at two is going up to four like the other species. And they're scrapping size limits on dewies, bald chin groper and break sea cod. That's because those species tend to die when they're brought to the surface anyway. And professional fishing boats are having their catches halved as well. Which is very good news for fish farms in Southeast Asia. Commercial boats took 247 tonnes in 2020. That compares with between 271 and 314 tonnes for recreational boats. The commercial guys reckon the amateurs should take more of a hit. Some recreational fishers say there are other ways to boost stocks, breeding and releasing fingerlings, for example. You can't hold on to them forever. Which sounds good, but releasing baby fish has one problem. Baby shark, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, you go fishing, so what do you reckon? 
It's very obvious to anyone who likes casting a line that there aren't many fish out there at the moment. Don't worry about Red Ember, it's hard enough to get a feed of King George Whiting right now. Leo's right. Fishing blows. Something needed to be done, and the government has made a tough call that's hopefully the right one, and we will avoid the total ban on pink snapper, which happened in South Australia. McGowan is supporting the new rules with an education campaign about the importance of keeping fish you'd ordinarily throw back which unfortunately will come too late for some threatened species. Not just fish bans in the headlines. Indonesia is outlawing another kind of hookup. Politicians in Jakarta are banning sex out of wedlock. Applies to the whole country, which will be a shock to Jamie Collins' bogan mates who go to Bali. Not least of all because most of them don't know it's part of Indonesia. I'm cultured. I'm sophisticated. I'm Ben Harvey. If anyone knows how to murder someone and get away with it, it would have been him. He was a animal. Do you believe Gary White is an innocent man? 100%.